Hello and welcome to the channel where today we're explaining span of control. Now, span of control is very simply the number of subordinates that report to a manager. So in the example here, we could say that the IT manager has a span of control of three as they have three subordinates reporting to them. Now, all organizations with more than just a few employees will have layers and the number of layers in an organization will depend on two factors. So firstly, the size of the organization itself, and secondly, the span of control of the average manager within that organization. Now, if managers within an organization typically have lots of subordinates, then the organizational chart is going to be flatter and wider. And in that case, there'll be fewer management positions relative to the number of total employees. And conversely, if managers within an organization have few subordinates, then the organization is going to be taller and narrower. And in that case, there will be more management positions relative to the total number of employees. Now, note that there are two dimensions to every team managed. So first we have the horizontal dimension and that refers to the number of employees a manager has directly reporting to them. And secondly, we have the vertical dimension and that refers to the number of employees that are indirectly managed by that manager. So that's the depth of the organizational chart underneath that manager. So this vertical dimension is often referred to as a manager's depth of control. Sometimes an organization will define its ideal span of control. And that's the number of direct reports that managers within the organization should ideally have. Now, if a manager has more than that number, then they will be considered to be overutilized. And conversely, if they have less than that number, they're considered underutilized. Now, there is no right or wrong span of control. It's going to depend on the organization in question and what suits it best. But here are some factors to consider. So firstly, the experience and people skills of the manager in question or managers within the organization. Basically here, the less skilled they are, the more suited they are to a narrower span of control. The next factor is the skill level of employees and highly skilled and qualified, particularly professional employees often produce better results within a large span of control. And conversely, less skilled employees often need and prefer closer supervision and are therefore more suited to a narrower span of control. And finally, we have the organizational culture itself. So more autocratic organizations will be more suited to a smaller span of control, whereas organizations with a more democratic style will be more suited to a wider span of control. The key thing is that your organization doesn't just end up with some random structure, but is deliberate about whether a shallow or deep organizational structure is right for it. So let's take a look at the pros and cons of having a large span of control. So firstly, in terms of advantages, it's important to realize that what we're essentially describing here is the advantages of having a shallow or flat organizational structure. So firstly, faster decision-making. With fewer layers within the organization, then decisions can be made more quickly. We have lower costs relative to organizations with a small span of control because fewer managers are needed. We have improved communication between managers and employees with employees more likely to be able to interact with senior managers because they're closer to them and managers more likely to understand the issues arising at the coal face of the organization. Finally, we have more freedom. So typically employees will feel freer and less under a microscope than when the span is smaller. In terms of disadvantages, then there are fewer opportunities for employees. So with fewer layers in the organization, there's less opportunities for employees to be promoted. Next, we have poor discipline. So with so much autonomy given to employees, these organizations can suffer from poor discipline. Next, we have poor relationships. Again, because there's so many employees to manage, it may be difficult for the manager to form a strong and close relationship with each of their subordinates. And finally, poor performance. With so little supervision, 
then the overall performance of the organization may be poor. So now let's take a look at the pros and cons of having a small span of control. And with this, essentially, we need to describe the advantages of and disadvantages of a tall organizational structure. So let's take a look at advantages. So we have easy access to superior. So the subordinate can quickly and easily speak to their superior whenever they want. And that can create the sense for the employee that communication is actually better than with a wider span of control. Uh, we have better opportunities for employees to get promoted. We have closer supervision and greater attention to the needs of the employee from the manager. And we have less skill required than if the manager is trying to control a much larger group of subordinates. Now, in terms of disadvantages, firstly, motivation. Employees can feel under constant and close supervision, which can be demotivating. Secondly, we have slower decision making, and that's caused by simply the fact there are more layers making decision making slower. And finally, we have decreased communication. With more layers, communication will not only be slower, but it'll be much more difficult for senior management to understand the issues being faced at the bottom of the organization. So in summary, span of control is very simply defined as the number of subordinates a manager within an organization has reporting to him or her. Now, within an organization, taller organizational structures are relatively more expensive than flatter and wider structures due to the increased number of managers required. However, taller structures give much more control over the work of subordinates. Now, ultimately, there is no right or wrong span of control, and it is up to each organization to find the right balance that works best for itself. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.